this will be our fourth. Yes, our fourth lesson. No doubt have noticed in this and other discussions that we've had that there's a closeness in Christ's body that transcends any other human relationship. Amen. What we are to one another in Christ is not dependent upon and it's not sustained by any of the human senses. Even though the human senses are sanctified and made suitable for expression, the thing that sustains us is higher than yeah. is hi higher than these. We have a living connection with one another, and for that reason, it's got to rise above what is normal relationships of life. It has to rise higher than that because. Is something greater is being done in this relationship, this identity with one another. Now, the fact that this is the way it is means that we should reason that this is connected with eternity. There isn't anything in your senses that's connected with eternity. So the fact that there's something transcendent or above human sensibility implies that you should be able to see it that there's it connects with eternity in some in some way in God's eternal purpose and it's characterized by eternal life and eternal life cannot be sustained by temporal yeah. life mm -hmm. now, the glory of this is that the entire Godhead is involved in this the Father caused this connection. The Son maintains it. And the Holy Spirit makes it firm and profitable. Amen. The whole Godhead is involved in this, in our association with one another in Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, we go out of Christ, that's, a, that's another story. That's why we ought to always keep this in mind, remind one another of this. That when we come together, we want the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to be active. Yes. And for that to happen, our minds have to be at a certain level and our awareness of eternal things. See, what we have in Christ is just more than just friendship. Yeah. Or what or camaraderie. We're not like a religious pep club. There's something that's associated with the wisdom that comes down from above, which is, is to be found among the assembly of the saints. The wisdom that comes down from above is to be found in the assembly of the saints. That wisdom is first pure, <laughs> then it's peaceable and gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. That, that's the kind of wisdom we're... <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah. You don't want to be hard to be entreated. Because yeah. if you are, then that means you've not got this wisdom. See? Yeah. From above. So this, uh, I think we've... Uh, We've experienced a major of uh, remarkable advance in this area, but it's not over yet. The more profound things are, the easier you must be to be entreated. Yes. See, she so rise higher. All this easy to be entreated and full of full good fruit. That's got to come up, come up with it. And of course, this is not. Uh, this, it's a, the association we have with one another is not based upon a sectarian identity or fleshly preferences. And the further you get to the Lord, 
the more aware you are of the presence of others that are near the Lord. Mm -hmm. You've noticed this? Yeah. Amen. That the further you are from the Lord, you become more conscious of other people in the flesh. You, yeah. you, you, think of, you think of them after the flesh, and this is just, just what happens. When you're drawing near the Lord, it's quite different. Now, this kind of relationship with the Lord that we have with one another can't be exploited for personal advantage. Some people try and do this, you know. They try and capitalize on our fellow, our closeness to one another, just purely for personal, purely for personal advantage. Yeah. But it won't work. God won't allow this high and holy relationship to be weakened and exploited with mere personal interests. So someone will say, well, I wish people pay more attention to me. Well, I don't listen to things like that. You shouldn't either. Because it's, it's, generally it's not honest. Some of this has happened. We've, we've experienced things like this. Some of this has happened, but it's not honest. And you shouldn't listen to it because the devil will try and use people like this to make you think, well, there you are. There you weren't. You weren't thinking about other people again. But see, when you draw near to the Lord, this is not possible to not be thinking about other people in a proper way. We had an example tonight of a proper way to. Consider someone who's not in the Lord. See, Brother Jim brought this up by his brother. So it is that you forget. You don't forget about these associations, but you have a higher view of it. And it's that's a harder relationship to bear than the other one. The other one, you can gloss it over, and it doesn't constitute the burden that comes with this concern for other people. There's a weight, but you, you want to you want to take that, carry that, because the Lord will strengthen you. They have a burden for these kind of situations. Now, the kind of unity that undergirds projects that have been conceived by men and carried on by human wisdom, the unity of the faith can't help can't help that. Yeah. So someone in town thinks up a what he, ministry quote, and then he wants the people of God to come up undergird it. Well, we've got to have a little more information about projects like that. And we've, uh, we've come to become more sensitive to that recently. Babylon the Great, it knows that what God gives cannot be exploited. It, it won't put it in those words, but that's why it makes alliances with the kings of the earth. Yeah, that's, right. Amen. that's exactly why it does yeah. this. It, because it knows mm. intuitively. These people know that what God testifies to in the scripture won't really help them. So instead of saying, I got to have a different agenda, they go to the kings of the earth and the wisdom of the world. Now with that in mind, let's uh, look at this text we have tonight. Because this is, we're hearing or reading about a person expressing himself to a, another member of the body of Christ. How, how does he, how does he talk? What does he say? I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers, hearing of thy love and faith which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all, all saints. Amen. Now he's, he doesn't say this often, Paul doesn't, but he says it enough that you kind of pick up on it. You don't thank God for something somebody else did. I mean, this is elementary, but I mean, if you're, if you gave your child a gift yesterday, you'd feel offended if they went and thanked the neighbor for it, wouldn't you? Yeah, right. it, it was, uh, but professed Christians do this all the time. Yeah. <laughs> they get something from God, 
and he thanked somebody else for it. So let's look at this thanking God. I thank God. What does it mean to thank God? Like, what does that mean? I think you'll find it's an expression of insight and understanding. That's why you thank God, because of what you understood. It's the result of perceiving something pertaining to life and godliness. You've seen something that provoked you to thank. As used in Scripture, thank, thank. That means to be grateful or to express gratitude or to give thanks or to express gratitude to God or to render or return thanks. So I want to look at that a little bit. It's kind of the scope of what thanks is. Being grateful as being appreciative means you've been you've been pleased, you've been comforted, you've been refreshed. You're thanking God because you've realized, you've seen it, you've realized certain advantages and benefits that have enhanced spiritual life and you're you're grateful. You're Amen. Yeah. you're appreciative for it. Maybe you are we may compare before you had this what life was like, see as being grateful. But then there's a such thing as expressing gratitude. They just put it into words. Yeah. One means I'm really grateful, but to put it into words, it, uh, it's, it's a bit of more of a challenge. Spiritual life involves becoming more proficient in expressing mm -hmm. gratitude. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes I can almost... Since the Lord saying to me, I say, I'm grateful. I said, why are you? Why are you? Why are you grateful? What What have you realized because of this? See, to elaborate. It's good to learn to elaborate on this to God. And thankfulness involves feeling grateful. See, there is such a thing as being past feeling. Remember? You just don't feel anything in your spirit incapable of being impressed inwardly by spiritual advantages. Or oh, the devil loved to get people in this kind of state where they could receive something from God, but it wouldn't mean anything. It wouldn't feel grateful. By comparison, thanking God is a result of feeling the impact of what you've seen. And it, it, it registers kind of an impact on the, on the soul. And they're like, pushes gratitude out of the mouth. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you learn to express it. Or giving thanks. That's giving thanks. That's like the free will offerings under the law. Giving it. These are not offered because like there's a moral law that says you should do it. Or just a be ye thankful. It does say this. But this giving thanks is when there's an inward <coughs> compulsion. It you feel a, a compulsion. You've got to, you got to express your thanks to God. You've got to give Him mm -hmm. thanks. Mm -hmm. The fruit of our lips, even giving thanks to His name. Miss us. You mentioned this, but it's something that we grow in. Giving thanks is something that we have to increase in. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about when you teach children very young to say thank you, this is what they're able to do. Yeah. They yeah. express that in those words. Mm -hmm. but as they grow, we expect them to be able to do more than that. Yes, mm -hmm. and that's also, right. This expression you were talking about, we grow in our ability to express to the Lord why we're thankful. Amen. But before mm -hmm. that's able to happen also, we have to grow in our ability to see what he's given. Yes, Amen. Right. Amen. 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 Hey, this man. is part again. We we talk, go over the road, Robert. This, this is the, I can remember when the children were younger, and I would try, uh, make the attempt to teach them this at the dinner table. Now they were. We taught them. Of course, you have to give thanks for what you, you've received of the Lord. Now, 
But there's my, and I tried to use the meal as an example now. You've given things for it, but that doesn't mean all the way through the meal you can complain because it's not what you wanted to eat. It was, that's a kind of like voids the thanks. When, when you hear you see what, what's on the table, it's for you. It's been provided for you. You didn't have to go out and work for it. You didn't have to provide it, but now it's for you. You can partic you can eat it. And, um, and yet, it, it's, it's a remar it was remarkable to me that getting that across to them was much more difficult than what I had thought. You say, well, you just tell them. You should be thankful. Well, yeah, they should be, but... Having them being thankful is completely different. That's right. And, but, but what I can remember, what it, it this started to dawn on me that for years my father had provided all this sustenance, right? But and even though I said I was thankful, it, it took me a long time until I was almost an adult to really appreciate <laughs> what was there. And the same thing's true in the Lord. If you can't really you can't you can't have the insight to understand what Christ has given you. you how can you really be thankful? Yeah, yeah. you can't. Amen. Amen. Yes, Sister June. Yeah, uh, being thankful. This is we, we talk about being able to say the things that we've learned, to be able to communicate. <coughs> mm -hmm. This communication is it has more than just one facet to it. Whenever a person is thankful, the fact that they can express it is an indicator of, of their, their true gratitude. But it modifies you when you're thankful. Yeah. But Brother Robert used mm -hmm. the example of a meal. Mm -hmm. Well, whenever you're thankful for that, you might, I mean, to be able to say it in words kind of like defines it for the people around you. Yeah. You know, this is what I'm thankful for. Mm -hmm. And it identifies who they're thankful to. But when you're really thankful for that meal, you act differently toward yes. the person who provided it Amen. than you, than, like maybe you help, mm -hmm. or you're, you're mindful of them in some other way as a result of them having provided that yes. for you. So thankfulness has a depth to it, yes. as yeah. well as just a verbal expression. Amen. Amen. So that yeah. we're, when we give thanks for our food, we're mindful also of how, how we render the benefits that food is to us, to yeah, the Lord, to like the Lord. using the strength mm -hmm. of it in, in service to Him. Amen. 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 I, was, I was thinking, mm -hmm. there's probably nothing any worse than having being ungrateful or having an ungrateful oh, yeah. child or something oh, yeah. like that. I remember when I was, I was near about grown, we used to brag on Mama's cooking. Mm -hmm. Daddy said, well, look, slip a couple of dollars under the plate for you, Mama. <laughs> and I never did really pick up on that to him, you know. But, uh, you know, now God, He can teach you how to be thankful. Oh, yeah. He's not going to let the children grow up and uh -huh. not be thankful. He can put you in a situation where you can learn to be thankful. It can get, the, it can get, it can get that tough uh -huh. that you appreciate the deliverance when it comes. And He'll teach you to be th be thankful. Mm -hmm. Paul, Paul knew what to be thankful for yeah. already. Amen. This is one of the great benefits of meeting together for, mm -hmm. for proper purposes. It cultures yes. thanksgiving. Amen. And if the, this brother, this sister, this person will express something that maybe you hadn't exactly thought of, that you've experienced, you've you've benefited, but you had not somehow you had not made the connection that that brother or sister made, and so it increases mm -hmm. your thankfulness. It increases yes. it. Amen. So you, I think a lot of people start out in Christ and thankfulness more or less has to do with the, the things directly bearing upon God. They don't see the entirety of life. But in the assembly, this can be cultured. Of course, if you're in an assembly where there isn't expressions and this sort of thing, then that you're not likely to increase very much in uh, your thankfulness. Giving thanks, giving it. And another, returning thanks. Thanksgiving is, in a sense, it's a response. It's a response. The blessings are poured out. You see it. You realize the benefits of it. And it re redounds. Thanksgiving comes back to the Lord for it. Now, that glorifies God. 
See, that glorifies God. Angels see him poured out. Principalities and powers see you experiencing it. But they also see this Thanksgiving coming yeah. back. Amen. That's right, man. And this, this tells people, this tells holy angels the kind of work God's done yes. in the people. They didn't see that in Israel, though, see? Uh -huh. They didn't see that in Israel. God would pour out corn to them, and they got, they'd credit it to Baal. Uh -huh. See? They weren't thankful. The early Gentiles, they were not thankful. This was a charge brought against them. Neither were thankful. Mm -hmm. Now, all of a sudden, here's this body of people. They're in the same world. Yeah, that's right. So far as their earthly progenitor is concerned it's all they trace back to Adam mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but all of a sudden these people are returning back mm -hmm. thanksgiving to God that was yeah. missing from the masses of people for thousands of years mm -hmm. that brings great praise great glory to God Amen. giving it thanks it causes God to rejoice over yeah, that's right. I mean, if, if you've Amen. labored over something and then the person that receives that is truly thankful. Yeah. That changes, it just changes mm -hmm. everything. Yeah, that's right. And I says, I thank my God, my God. Yeah, that's an interesting expression, isn't it? My God. That Those words are found 148 times in Scripture. My God. It's found in testimonies. He will tell my God did such and such. It's found in describing a source. My God caused this or that. It accounts for enablement. My God, you know, made me able. It's the object of praise. I'm praising my God. It's a recognition of deity. My Lord, my God. Remember what Thomas said? See, so use a variety of ways in in Scripture, it's not a boast of ownership, like my car. Mm -hmm. It's not, not that sort of thing. It's a confession of affiliation. My God. Uh -huh. yeah. I'm, I'm affiliated. There's a, a genuine affiliation recognized in heaven between me and my God. He's my God. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. As compared to just your God. Yeah. My God. <laughs> And it's matched by divine recognition. He says he's not ashamed to be called their God. Yeah. See, there it is. See, it's, yeah. it's matched by divine recognition. Now, I thank my God making mention of thee. Make, making mention of thee. It's possible for prayers to be uh, marked by a very much generality. And there's some senses in which there's certain generality is, is necessary in prayer. But then a certain specificity is too. I make mention. Philemon. I say that in some of my prayers. Philemon. I make mention of you. I mention you before God. I mention you in my prayers. Now, there are four occasions in Scripture in which Paul stated he made mention of certain saints to God. You'd think that might be mentioned very frequently, but it, it isn't. The Roman brethren, he said he made mention of them in his prayers. The Ephesian brethren made mention of them in his prayers. Thessalonian brethren, he made mention of them in his prayers. Philemon made mention of them in his prayers. One place, I'm showing now about mentioning people in prayer. One place Paul prayed for the saints in Corinth, he said, I pray that you will do no evil. Like, who was the last person you prayed that for? That they would do no evil. That's in scripture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what he said. Yeah. I pray that you will do no evil. Who? That's Amen. potent. Yes, yeah. uh -huh. Amen. See, there's a lot of people we're concerned about. Uh -huh. At some point, add this in there. Yeah. I'm going to pray that they'll do no evil. Uh -huh. yeah. Don't say, well, they're past the prayer now. 
He may be tempted to think that, well, what's the use now? I mean, I've talked to him. I've written to him. I've spoken to him. All right, now start praying for him. I pray that they do no evil. Well, I'm glad it's in the Bible. Another place he prayed the love of the brethren would abound yet more and more. Made mention, see, made mention. Their love would abound more and more in all knowledge and judgment. Again, he prayed for the brethren that their whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So who's the last, who's the last person you prayed that for? You actually mentioned their name and said, Lord, preserve them blameless to the end. You're a saint. You've got a right to pray this. Amen. See, you're a co-laborer together with God. This is what God is doing. You enter right in there. Enter right in there with God, praying for them. He prayed the Ephesians. He prayed that God would give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of himself. So he made mention of them before God. He just, he just didn't say who they were. He said what to do. He, it, who's the last person you prayed then for? Lord, give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of yourself. Give that to them. Yeah. So well, they're not worthy of that. Well, like, who's, who is? <laughs> that's, what, that's what we're here for. See, that's, that, this is part of our mm -hmm. ministry, so Amen. to speak. In Colossians, he prayed they'd be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. He mentioned that. Mm -hmm. He mentioned them to God yeah. in that way. Mm -hmm. Fill them with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So to make mention of someone is to identify them by name before God, giving specific thanks for them and seeking particular advantages for them. This is one of the appointed means of being able to stand against the wiles of the devil and withstand in the evil day. This is part of the whole armor of God. Praying, making supplication for all yeah. saints. See, for, yeah. that's what Paul's doing here. He's Amen. part of his weaponry. And then Paul particularized how to talk about him when they mentioned him to God. And I will take this for myself. When you mention me before God, uh, mention this, say that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly and make known the mystery of the gospel. It's either there he told him what to, what to <laughs> here's how you mention me. Here's what I want to be. Remember when you're before God, here's what I want you to ask him to do for me. It's good to give some thought to mentioning people by name Amen. before God. Yes. I can testify to this. That when I was in the hospital, I couldn't think clearly. It was it was really bothering me, and um, Sister Anita had to leave, and, and I was there by myself. And I can remember when my thoughts came to me clearly, and it occurred to me the saints were praying for me. She was texting people, and I. It, but it hit me. This is why I'm. I, I can think clear now. Yeah. And, and I. But the Lord yeah. gave me to see that that this that they were they were mentioning me. And it did just change stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I was very thankful. Amen. Now, some people, are, their custom is to pray extensive prayers in the morning, some in the evening, whenever they are. Mm -hmm. But it's good to enlarge the circumference of your prayers yeah. mm -hmm. outside of your the things that immediately concern you that you you need to pray for, and you know we, we, you do that, but enlarge this ministry to make mention yeah. who will I mention before the Lord today what name will I mention maybe there was maybe a thousand other people that mentioned that same name mm, yeah. maybe there maybe there was some special crisis mm -hmm. that was taking place and all of a sudden the spirit moved a whole lot of people to mm -hmm. make mention of that name mm, yeah. for God yes I was Considering this, I don't think I had seen it as clearly until you were going through the different pieces of armor from Ephesians, of how this is a, a large ministry that we have within the body of, of our labors and our efforts being a protection 
for our brethren. That's right. And that this armor isn't just something that we take to put on ourselves, but this armor is something that we take up on behalf of the whole body. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. We, Amen. We are providing protection for the whole unit. Very for each good. In very good. And Amen. This is something that I'd like to see more of, but uh, it's very, very see, encouraging. I, Mm -hmm. That's good. That that asks us how much is going for us. Yes, amen. How much is for us? Mm -hmm. If God be for us, well, this is in the for us mm -hmm. yes. category. Yes. And, and just the fact that Paul uh, mentioned that this is the kind of prayer he wanted for him. Now, you know, many saints prayed this. Now, look oh, at the yeah. benefit we've received That's from right. We know the Lord answered this That's prayer. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Brother Gavin? Yes. And you might be moved by the Lord in the middle of the night. Oh, yeah. Wake, wake, and it's like, well, who can I, you know, and just start praying, you know, and different ones come into your yeah. mind, and and uh, <coughs> it's it's a wonderful ministry to be able to do that. Look Amen. Amen. Make it mention. She's mm -hmm. a lot there, isn't there? I do this because I've heard of uh, I've heard of your love and faith. Uh, I've heard I heard about it. See, of all time, the condition of the saints was something that was verbalized. It talked about the saints, how they were doing. Paul heard about the comely condition of the Ephesians, their faith and love. And he heard about the divisions that were in Corinth. And he heard about, uh, Paul and Timothy both heard about the advance of the church of Colossae. So they... Oh, what church have you heard about lately? Yeah. See, now my point I'm trying to underscore here is this kind of communication in our time is not common. Amen. Early in the history of the body of Christ, when the Samar people of Samaria received the word of God, the brethren in Jerusalem heard about it. And took appropriate action. When Peter was in Joppa, the disciples in Lydia heard about it. Went and, went and got him in the case of Dorcas. When those of the household of Caninus were converted, people back in Jerusalem heard about it. When certain corrupt teachers went to the Gentiles with corrupting doctrines, the brethren in Jerusalem heard about it. Took appropriate action. When Paul did not know about the condition of the brethren where he preached, he said to Barnabas, let's go again, visit every city, visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. Yeah, amen. See, this, this, was, <laughs> this is a different kind of level of consciousness than the, Babylon has eroded this, see. Yeah. Now recently... We heard about the condition of some brethren in West Africa. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now we want to ponder about how we reacted to mm -hmm. yeah. how we reacted to that. Do you see what I'm saying? It, mm -hmm. And we want to have a kind of an assembly that some kind of a report goes out among the discerning people about it. Amen. So now Paul writes to an individual believer and he informs him, I heard, I heard, I've heard about you, Philemon, I've heard. I've heard about your status in Christ Jesus. The words got back to me about it. I mean, what would this mean to you if you got a letter from some eminent child of God and they said, I heard about your, I heard about your faith. Well, you know what that builds you up because you know where it came from. It's apparent from the letters of Paul to Timothy and Titus that he was aware of their status in Jesus. Just the way he talked, you could tell he, he knew where they were at. And he addressed them appropriately. It's important to know, as, 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 best, as best you can, it's important to know where people are at yeah. to whom you're going to minister yes. or for whom you pray. It's important to know where they're at, right. what they need, not for purposes of criticism, but for purposes of resolution. Mm -hmm. As I have heard of thy love and faith, 
thy love and thy faith. The precise phraseology is properly rendered, I heard about the love and the faith. That's the proper, the article the is in both. It's not, I heard about the love and faith. It's a the love and the faith. Or the faith, yeah, love and the faith. With the article before them both. Now these two things are mentioned together, love and faith. Several places. Ephesians 6.23, peace be to the brethren and love with faith. See there. Here they are joined together. But to us who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. See there. One thing, two components. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ was exceedingly abundant with faith and love. There it is again. 1 Timothy 1.14. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love. There it is again. 2 Timothy 1.3. Faith, they're together, mentioned together. They're not to be thought of as independent from one another. Yeah. They, they're like Siamese twins. They travel together. Mm. So love and faith are to be considered together. Yeah. Whereas in some places they're considered separate. I get it said some places, faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all saints. So that's, 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 mis that's, that's not what our text isn't saying that. It's, uh -huh. This is a different kind of expression. Now, faith is categorically said to be toward our Lord Jesus. It's Acts 20 and 21. And faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ is described as faith in the Lord Jesus. This has to do with trusting Jesus, depending upon him. This is not a once-for-all action. This isn't something that happened on you know, December 12th, 19, whatever. Is an ongoing thing. Amen. The criticality of love being toward the Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. faith and love mm -hmm. toward the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Not just faith toward the Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. love yeah. toward the Lord yeah. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now the importance of this is seen in a statement made by Paul in 1 Corinthians 16, 22. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema or cursed. Love toward. Uh -huh. Your faith uh -huh. toward Christ. Your love toward Christ. Uh -huh. Jesus said, if God were your father, you would love me. Uh -huh. Love toward uh -huh. Jesus Christ. He affirmed that those who loved him would keep his commandments. He that loves me will keep my commandments. And, and they keep his words too. John 14, 23. Paul wrote of grace being toward those who love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. He loved toward. Mm -hmm. yeah. Both faith and love. Both faith in the Lord Jesus and the believer's love for the Lord Jesus are manifested. Mm -hmm. I'm pointing out in another text, two other texts at least, it says, faith in the Lord Jesus and love toward all the saints. The NIV translate this verse that way, but that is not right uh -huh. is faith and love both toward the Lord Jesus Amen. they're focused That's right. toward him so now the yes would that point that you just made this is faith and love being directed to Jesus would that fall in the category of by him through him and for him because he dispenses it to the church, yeah, his, for, his, bo yes. his body, yes, for, and then for receives. Him, yeah. mm -hmm. Yes. It's important to see this text like for what it is saying here. That yes, we do have such a thing as faith in the Lord Jesus and love toward all the saints. But in this text, it's faith and love That's right. yeah. toward the Lord Jesus. Which means there's evidence... <laughs> I'm thanking God I heard about your faith and love toward the Lord Jesus, which means it has some kind of evidence. That's what yeah. provoked the report of it to be made. Yeah. There's a strong need for this to be affirmed. 
And for you to like examine it yourself, when you think of faith and love, they both are toward the Lord Jesus. But he continues, and toward all saints. So faith and love, both, as a, as a duet, are toward Christ, but they both, as a duet, are also toward the saints. The word has to do with focus. The word means to take advantage of, towards, regard to. Faith and love. So it's easy to see toward the Lord Jesus. But now this, how about faith and love toward the saints? Let's take a look at that for a moment. <clears throat> Let's look first of all at faith toward the saints. <laughs> James indicated that this was true when he said, Brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. Mm -hmm. yeah. So faith has to do with your attitude toward God's people mm -hmm. as well as your focus of your trust in Christ. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. Don't have faith with respect of persons. The brethren are to benefit from your faith. Yeah, amen. Yeah. First of all, we understand it goes to yeah, Christ, yeah. but it also goes to the saints. Faith toward all saints. In the assembly, and we speak of the truth, we speak the truth with love with one another, speaking unto edifying. What is that? That's faith toward the saints. Mm -hmm. You're expressing edification. Ministry and strengthen their faith. That's your faith toward mm -hmm. the saints. Yeah. When we pray for all saints everywhere, watching thereunto with all perseverance and suppl supplicates for all saints, that's an expression of faith toward the saints. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, you come before God and you have faith toward the saints. Mm -hmm. You're praying for the saints, mm -hmm. for their per for their protection. Faith toward the saints. When men like Onesiphorus, he went to Rome, which was not a hamlet, <laughs> and he, he sought Paul out. What was that? It was faith toward the saints. Amen. See, <laughs> he sought him out and brought benefit to him, Onesiphorus. Phoebe, Paul says, she's been a sucker of many and of myself also. Well, what do you mean? She had faith toward, her faith is toward the saints. They're, they're, whenever you advantage God's people, it's the expression of your faith toward mm -hmm. the saints as well as toward yeah. the Lord Jesus Christ. So this was a necessary addition to faith being expressed toward the Lord Jesus. So sometimes Satan tends people to be like spiritual loners and they isolate themselves. See, they're missing out on this faith toward the brethren, toward all saints, faith toward them. That's, that is what faith gives you. You you transmit to the brethren. Your, your faith provokes you to advantage the brethren. And love to all saints. Faith and love toward all saints. The faithful are commended for their love toward all saints. In two different places, Ephesians and Colossians. Jesus affirmed that, affirmed that this is a telling mark of his disciples. By this shall all men know you're my disciples if you have love for one another or love toward all, all saints. And John said, by this we know we've passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. That's love toward, toward the saints. But if someone tells us, you ought to love everybody, well, it needs to be said a little better than that, a little more clear than that. You ought to learn to say faith and love. I've heard about your faith and love toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints. Yeah. 
John goes on to say that he said, uh, Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Now, he's not talking about martyrdom. Yeah, that's right. uh -huh. The next verse says, But whoso hath this world's goods and seeth his brother have need and shutteth up his bowels of compassion, how dwelleth the love of God in him? So lay down your lives. So the brethren means forfeit mm -hmm. personal advantage yes. in order that you might have love toward Amen. all saints. See? Amen. That's what laying down your lives for the brethren, it does, that doesn't mean martyrdom, although it's, it may at some time involve that. Uh -huh. But it involves taking your own personal interests yes. and putting them in the background in favor of seeking the interest of the brethren. This is a priestly activity. Yes. Mm -hmm. We've been made kings and priests unto God. Yeah. But the priest's activity was to minister to the Lord and in behalf of the people in as well. In behalf of the people, so that's amen. What we're, that's what we're doing. It's, it's a role in Christ that we've also taken upon as under priests. And, and if a person thinks, well, that's, that puts us at a disadvantage. Well, so let's say you've been 50 brethren to meet with. So you got fifty brethren doing the same thing toward you. Yeah, now, right. where are you going to get the most? Where are you going to get the most benefit? By you seeking yourself, or by these other brethren? Yeah. Yeah. This is the body being tempered mm -hmm. together, see, yeah. <laughs> or knit mm -hmm. together. Love toward all, all saints. That's why the early church has said of them that they had this sudden influx of disciples, probably in the millions, from what they estimate. For devout men of every nation under heaven, and after what happened on Pentecost, these brethren all decided to stay for a while, evidently for some time. <coughs> We've had brethren that have had that, they, they decided to stay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they had to visit us and they decided to stay. Yeah. Uh -huh. yep. So some of us took them into our home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Some of you did too. Somebody, some lost their home, so some of the other brother took them in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See? They placed their own. Some people say, well, it's just too crowded. We got, we, our house is too small. House is too small? You need to rethink things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. The early church said, neither, nobody said that what they had was their own. How's that? Nobody told him to do this. This is love toward the saints. Amen. See, Here's what it says. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. So whoever had need, it was meant. That's love toward all saints. Therefore, Paul freely declares to Philemon, I heard about your faith and love toward the Lord Jesus, and toward all saints. What a summation of a person's life. I, I covet that kind of report. Amen, amen. Whether it's a person or a church, to, to covet that kind of a report. Faith and love toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints. Well, I think I'll close there, but you can see there's quite a bit there, isn't there? <laughs> no, we're... we're we are in fellowship with God, and, and we really, we really don't want to have a, a smaller view than He has on what He's doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, because He's working salvation in the midst of the entire earth. Yes. And uh, so I appreciate that phrase, "all saints, oh. all mm -hmm. saints." Paul said it this way: He said, "With um, unto them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints." With them that in every place yeah, call every, upon the name of the Lord, yeah, both mm -hmm. theirs and ours. And yeah. so this is something that you have to be careful of because you can get, like you said in prayer, uh -huh. you can get really short-sighted. Yeah. And it's not that it's unlawful to just mention the things about you or just, even just the things about your fellowship, but you want to you wanna be able to branch out. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and see and recognize that the Lord's work is beyond, it's, all, it's over the whole earth. Mm -hmm. It's over the whole earth. Yeah, amen. amen. Is it Tasha? Yeah, this is one of the problems with denominationalism mm -hmm. is that it, it hinders this love that you can have for all mm -hmm. saints. Mm -hmm. 
it stifles that. That's right. It's, it stifles that um, natural ability that we have in Christ to love mm -hmm. all saints. All saints. Amen. But, so you don't need a lot of prodding to love those who you prefer. That's right. I find that to be true. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, it's Melissa. I had thought earlier, like Sister Barb was thinking about this is a priestly activity. I thought yeah. about how we, how the Lord started this when he when he told the priests how to do, and then we saw yeah. Jesus, and now we're a part of the body. Mm -hmm. But also, a few other thoughts I had was when you have uh, this faith toward the saints, you perceive their needs. That's mm -hmm. right. Spiritually. Yeah. Yeah, it's been, um, amen. And you also see them as saints. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't see, like, like I have some blood family members here, but I don't see them like that. Mm -hmm. I, sometimes I do, but you know what I mean. Yeah. I see them as my brethren. Yeah. Yeah, so primarily. I see everyone yeah. as my brethren. So you can uh, see each person as a saint. And as you... As you're able to see all the members that you can actually see like that, then you can grow into thinking of all saints. Yeah. And as you grow in this, mm -hmm. it ministers to you yourself. Mm -hmm. And this is a kind of love that advantages <coughs> um, the saints spiritually. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hey, you remember what Jesus said one time? No one had left houses or lands and so forth, family members, that you receive abundantly more in this life. He mentions relatives, yeah. mothers and fathers and children. And... Yes, Brother Aaron. Knowing no man after the flesh, mm -hmm. I think, is an yes. area of yeah. uh, faith towards saints. Yeah, that's right. Obviously, mm -hmm. the love towards saints is much more common yeah. mm -hmm. area of knowledge than faith towards saints. Mm -hmm. But, but see, being able to buy, it takes faith to see faith. Yeah. And Amen. And being able to recognize mm -hmm. the yeah. new creature. Mm -hmm. in brethren and minister That's right. to that new creation, to mm -hmm. the new heart, to the new affections, to, mm -hmm. the, to the mind of Christ that we see in one another. Mm -hmm. it, it takes no uh, faith toward for that mm -hmm. ministry. Amen. That's right. Another thing on that too, um, even when you do have fleshly um, family members, it's better for you to minister to them in the spirit. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, because you're you're giving them more of an advantage mm -hmm. that you don't know them after the flesh. That's if you right. can, if you can, can when you're with them by yourselves, if you can be as um, as brethren, it's much more of an advantage. That's right. Amen. You notice the proper way is to our, our faith and love goes toward the Lord first, mm -hmm. yes, first. and then uh, to the brethren. Yeah. This is this is the proper way. You can see how this has been yes, has right. been turned flipped around. Oh yeah, and out there. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's always never mentioned faith and love to God. That, that I don't hear it, mm -hmm. but I always hear how you should love yeah, everybody. Another, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the other saint, the faith and love to Christ sanctifies faith and love to, to all the saints. Yeah. Mister Julie, um, when I come here, mm -hmm. sure, I'm 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 glad to see my daughter and my son and their family but I anticipate being here as much yeah, yeah, just, as yeah. much or more because mm -hmm. when we all come together as a body that's mm -hmm. the, that's more precious yes it is it is more precious yes sister Maddie Paul spoke about this uh, love and faith in Christ Jesus in the proper order he, he first mentioned the love and faith towards Christ Jesus, yes. and then after that is yes. towards the saints, because you really can't have a proper love or preference for the people of God until you first have a proper love and preference towards God Himself, Amen. And towards yeah. His Son. Amen. Yeah. I was considering um, when Sister Barb was talking about the Lord Jesus Christ and the um, pray for the saints to lift them up and then you said that it's important to know where the brethren are mm -hmm. when you minister to them and the reason that is is so that when you do go to um, pray for them um, you know what to pray for and how to pray for that brother or sister and when you pray it may it may strengthen them the next day mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah amen Paul the care 
that came on <laughs> Paul and Daly of all the churches, and not just that Paul was prone to worry. Yeah, that's his, right. His his desire and love for them was for their their well being. Amen. Yeah. Uh-huh. The, the things that he wrote, whether it was a commendation or a rebuke, mm-hmm. uh, both came from his faith, knowing uh-huh. their faith. Amen. Amen. So it was his faith toward. I think in a lot of a lot of times he told mm-hmm. churches things about themselves that they didn't know. Oh yes, yes. that yes. was a lot of a uh-huh. lot of the reason for the writing because mm-hmm. he saw something in them that they were yet to come around to see him. Amen. Mm-hmm. Now you want to you want to believe this that when you have prayers toward about the God's people that they will have an impact on the people. The uh, the part I hadn't thought about this much, but there was a lot of hearing yes. about things. Yes. Paul picked up. There's a lot of there was a lot of talk. That's right. Obviously, it, uh, it was the right kind of kind of communicating. Mm-hmm. But uh, they kept up. The saints kept up with one another. Yeah, their needs, right. spiritual Amen. needs, and things that was going on. And mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, we pick up some stuff along the way. We pick up some things from Babylon. I think that we ought to I keep you know keep things things to ourselves and you know don't be getting you know which I mean this this valid but mm-hmm. but here we see though yeah. uh, that it's that it's good that the saints know what's going on about about yeah. these yeah. things. It's it's so different today that we've experienced it here that when some well known saint moved to this area, we heard about it right away. But I talked to other Brotherhood dignitaries, and they said, "Why did I hadn't heard that he was?" Uh, they were in an environment where they didn't talk mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. about yeah. these things. Then other people they picked up on it right away. Like when Dorcas mm-hmm. was getting ready to die, they heard Peter's not far from here. We heard he's over there in Joppa. Well, they, they see they it would have made, it would have changed the whole circumstance if Peter had not been available, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but they knew where he was. Mm-hmm. He's over in Joppa. Yeah. It's to send some over there and get him. Yeah. That's how much they talk to one another. Mm-hmm. Yes, Brother Paul. That, the, that Peter was that close proximity, and that Peter was not being silent at the time either. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yes. You can't know that someone's there if they're being silent. He yeah. wasn't like a hermit over there, was That's he? That's right. That's right. Yeah, this care for the church that, that Paul had, it wasn't, uh, he didn't carry it. I mean, it was a burden, but he didn't carry it in his flesh. This was something that was, it was a flesh couldn't carry it anywhere. Yeah. The flesh, he wasn't like wringing his hands like, uh, I wonder what they're doing over there, you know. Yeah. It was higher than that. It was That's higher. Right. They moved him to do things. He'd send Timothy. Yes. He'd send Titus. He, mm-hmm. he, he did as much as he could yeah. himself. Then he took it up with the Lord. Then he sent other people. He so he implemented his amen. his love was toward all the saints. <laughs> yes, amen. yes, Sister Julie. It's, it's so important that the, that the body as a whole stays strong. Yes, it is. Help one another, and mm-hmm. when and when you see a part of the body that's not as strong. It does. It does affect, and you weep. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You weep, and you. You just plead with the Lord on their behalf. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You'll and notice that it, those who are in that state, they can't pick up on your concern. Uh-huh. That's right. They don't. Mm-hmm. You may even shed tears. They can't. They can't see it. Mm-hmm. But see, God can. That doesn't that just mean we quit having concern. That just means we take it. Uh-huh. Yeah. We take it up in this area of prayer. Mm-hmm. We take it up. I came, I came <laughs> into the assembly one day, and Brother Given approached me, and I don't know if you want me to say this or not, but he, he kind of leaned over. He said, "Can I stop praying for you now about that?" <laughs> but see, this he, it was because he, but see, just me knowing that he was praying, that helped. That helped. That, that gave us like a, it strengthened me, yeah. you know. Uh-huh. So this is an order that we share yeah. with yeah. one another these right, burdens. Yeah. And the fact that we all continue to grow, when we come together, we're still, we just fall back into place and keep going forward uh-huh. together. That's right. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm. It's very encouraging. Very, very Amen. 
All right, we'll have a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this text, for the fact that faith and love, this great uh, combination of heavenly gifts, can be focused toward the Lord Jesus, and then because of that, toward your saints. We're grateful for this level of participation in your kingdom, and we pledge ourselves to be good stewards of faith and love. In Jesus' name, amen.